Hello and welcome to the mission briefing for Mission 1B, Communications Net. So Communications Net is a mission about a communications relay in deep space, which has been uh, made vulnerable to uh, a slicing uh, attack. Slicing is uh, the Star Wars word for hacking. So basically what has happened here is the rebel operatives in Imperial Fleet Command have reset the security protocols on a bunch of uh, communications relay satellites in deep space and they are vulnerable to uh, a slice attack. Naturally the rebels have a, a squad of ships inbound to uh, take over those satellites and the rebels, the uh, Imperials also have a, a squad responding uh, which is on uh, patrol and they've been directed to head towards those uh, that communications relay to secure it again. So what that means for you as the player is that it's a satellite grab mission. It is going to be symmetrical. So both sides have uh, identical mission objectives and squad point totals. And uh, you're both going to be trying to take over these satellites. Let's move to the uh, setup. First thing you do is you start with the uh, Rebel player and you start placing these satellite tokens in the play area. Rules are you have to be beyond uh, range 1 of the table edge and beyond range 3 of other satellite tokens. So you'll probably end up with a spread out uh, a nice spread of satellites, something like this. Uh, if you're playing in Vassal, you sh can use uh, asteroids to measure range uh, like this, but uh, you don't have that problem if you're playing on the table. Uh, if you're unable to place a satellite uh, at beyond range 3 of other satellites, so this is good, but um, for example, this would not be a, a legal placement of an asteroid. You have to be beyond range 3. This is at range 3. Uh, so if you don't have any places where you can place uh, satellites beyond range 3 of each other, uh, then you can cut that back down to uh, beyond range 2. So in that case, uh, this would be a legal placement. But that's only if you uh, have to uh, go to that. All right, so moving on from the satellites to the asteroids, uh, you there are going to be four asteroids or debris tokens in this uh, scenario, and they follow pretty similar rules to the satellite tokens. Uh, that you start, uh, you alternate placing them starting with the rebel player, and they are going to be at beyond range one of the table edges. So here's good, here's not good. Illegal, illegal, legal. Um, they also have to be beyond range 2 of other asteroids and beyond range 1 of satellite tokens. So you'll probably end up like a, with a, a setup something like, uh, like this, looking like this. So after you have the uh, asteroids placed, Next step is to uh, deploy your your uh, Imperial and Rebel forces, and this will work much like uh, a normal uh, game of X-wing, a standard you know tournament-style game of X-wing. So you deploy an ascending pilot skill order. So in this case, I've got a bunch of uh, pilot skill one Tie fighters, and all your ships get deployed within range one of uh, your respective table edges. So I would just stick the Imperials up there like that and get the Rebels down here like so. Now when you're deploying you probably want to be considering where your satellite tokens are uh, and lining up your ships to be close to them. Uh, and we'll get into that in a second how these satellites work. but. Basically, this is how you're going to be setting up, set up, and uh, initiative is also determined uh, in the uh, normal way. Uh, so, uh, 
uh, whoever has fewer points uh, gets to choose initiative. And you, you would break a tie by rolling off. All right, so let's move into the, the meat uh, and bones of this scenario, which is the interactions with these satellites. Basically, uh, you are going to be trying to take over these satellites by uh, slicing them. So the way that you uh, that eat that ships can uh, slice into these uh, satellites is uh, by uh, assigning them slice tokens. So the way this works is that every ship gains the uh, slice action as part of the scenario in their action bar. So they can always always slice. And what you do when you slice a, t a satellite, you have to be at range one. So this is good here. And what you do is you basically target lock it. You take a target lock token, uh, you, you assign your ship the blue one, and you assign the satellite token the red of the red one of the pair. And uh, at the end of the combat phase, whoever has more slice tokens on uh, any given satellite takes control of that satellite. So in this case, the uh, Imperial player is going to be taking control of that satellite. And uh, you, in this case, will mark that uh, Imperial control with a, a focus token. You can use whatever tokens uh, you want, uh, but the recommendation is uh, focus tokens for the Imperials and stress tokens for the Rebels. Now, the reason that you're going to be, uh, that you are interested in taking these satellites is that at the end of the game, whoever... Uh, these, these satellites are going to yield points for whoever is controlling them. So overall, your mission objectives are going to be to destroy the enemy and to gain control of the satellites. And uh, if you neglect either one of those, you might be in trouble at the end of the mission. Uh, so let's go into a little more uh, complicated situations with the satellites. Uh, if you have... Uh, equal numbers of ships uh, slicing any given satellite. The so let's say that both these Tie Fighters have sliced this, and then both of these X Wings have also gone ahead and sliced this particular satellite. In that case, uh, each side has two, and because each side has the same number of slice tokens the control status of this satellite uh, does not change. So right now it's Imperial controlled. Uh, so if this exact situation was happening in a game, the satellite would stay Imperial controlled at the end of the combat phase. And it's also important to note that at the start of the end phase, so after the uh, you know control is determined, uh, all the slice tokens come off. So the, the slice tokens themselves are not permanent, but the control status is permanent. So this, once you control a satellite, it stays controlled until somebody slices it back. Um, so the the way that these satellite tokens are going to get you points mostly has to do with the arrival of the uh, coded transmission. So the way you determine when this transmission arrives is at the end of each uh, round. So uh, during the end phase, you roll uh, one attack die, and on hits, focus results, or critical hits, you go ahead and you add one uh, tracking token to a, a pile near the play area. So you're keeping track of how many uh, uh, tracking tokens go in that pile, uh, and you keep rolling those attack dice at the end of each round. So once you accumulate three tracking tokens in that pile, and immediately when you get those three tracking tokens, so this will be during an end phase, the transmission arrives, and uh, players will score points depending on how many satellites they have. Uh, it's important to note that the game doesn't end when the transmission arrives, uh, but that that satellite scoring does happen when that transmission arrives. So uh, the game actually only ends once one side has all their ships off the board. 
So uh, a normal go game might go like this, uh, you know, imperial ships, rebel ships everywhere, you're uh, taking over satellites, you're attacking each other. Let's say that each side ends up with three controlled satellites, that's pretty reasonable to me. Uh, and maybe one side gets uh, uh, an advantage in uh, ships destroyed, so let's say the rebels are having a tough time here and you end up in a situation basically like this, where there's still a bunch of Imperial ships on the table, uh, but there's only a couple of Rebel ships. So if the, Rebel, if the coded transmission arrives now, each side gets three points for each satellite that they control. So the Imperials will score 90 points, the Rebels will score 90 points. Now another scenario is that the transmission uh, never arrives. So this would happen uh, in the case that uh, all the rebel ships are destroyed or all of them flee. So let's imagine uh, this scenario where Imperials have really dominated. Uh, they've destroyed all the rebel ships, but the rebels still had a few satellites under their control at the end of the game. Um, if neither, neither side has uh, ships on the board, or rather if the uh, Imperials uh, are the only uh, players with ships on the table, they score uh, 30 points for every satellite they actively control. So Imperials would score 90 points from these satellites, but they would also score 15 points for satellites that they don't control. So that includes uh, Rebel-owned satellites or even neutral satellites like this. They get 15 points for every other satellite that they do not control. And uh, finally, one more scenario uh, is if uh, if you have some sort of situation where both sides uh, destroy each other in like a simultaneous fire type scenario, and there's actually no ships on the table, uh, and we, we did think of that, <laughs> then in that case, uh, each side just gains points for 30 points for every satellite that they control. So it's as if the transmission had arrived. You assume that the transmission arrives later, and uh, you still each side still controls those satellites. So 30 points for each satellite you control. Uh, but that's not the only way you score points in this mission, and indeed in, in every every Grayskull mission. Uh, the other way that you score points is by destroying uh, each other's ships. So if you, uh, when, when a ship is destroyed, uh, two things happen. The player who's destroyed that ship gains the points equal to that ship. So if a rebel uh, X-Wing blows up a TIE fighter, academy pilot, the uh, rebel player is going to score 12 points. And the second thing that happens is that the owning player, so the Imperial player in this case, loses that many points. So... Uh, in the case of a Academy pilot getting blown up, the Rebel sc player scores 12 points, and the Imperial player loses 12 points. A 24 point swing. So uh, it's sort of a, you know, you keep that in mind when you're flying your ships around, that it really does hurt you uh, to lose a ship. But on the other hand, uh, it is possible to preserve your ships by flying off the table. So, uh, in the late stages of a mission, if things aren't going your way, then you can always just fly off the board, and uh, in that case, in the later stages of mission, you will not uh, be penalized for that. So the ship doesn't count as destroyed, and you don't lose points uh, for flying that ship off the table. Uh, the only real exception to this is that uh, if you fly your ship off the table in the early stages of the game. So let's, uh, so the, the rules uh, state that if you uh, fly your ships off in the, by the, before the uh, third activation phase, so pretty much during the, your first or second movement, uh, if you fly your ship off the table at that point, so let's say I, you know, flew this X-Wing off on turn one or turn two, then, uh, it doesn't count as uh, destroyed for like roster purposes. So if this was a unique pilot, 
you would still keep that unique pilot. But the enemy would score points uh, equal to the cost of the ship. So if I flew this X-Wing off early, the start of a game, uh, first or second turn, then Rebel player doesn't lose points, but the Imperial player does score points uh, equal to the cost of the ship. So probably, you know, like 21 points for that uh, rookie pilot. So keep that in mind uh, during the course of your mission. It's often uh, a good idea during the uh, late stages of a mission to fly ships off the table uh, to, you know, run away and deny kills to the enemy uh, to keep your score up and keep their score down. But, you know, you also want to be mindful that you don't neglect these satellites at the same time. So, just a, a quick uh, final word about strategy in this mission. Uh, basically, uh, it's good to have large numbers of ships in this kind of type of mission because you want to have good satellite coverage. Uh, so, you know, ships like uh, TIE Fighters are great because you can put a lot of slice tokens out on the board, take over a lot of satellites uh, in a pretty short uh, time frame, but still have pack the punch to deal with uh, enemy ships. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that you, you want to have enough staying power to... <laughs> be able to uh, stay on the board long enough to actually uh, be there when the transmission arrives. So uh, even if you have all these TIE fighters, but they're getting just, and you send them out to capture all these satellites, uh, but the rebel player concentrates their forces and, and picks off, you know, three TIE fighters before you really start engaging him, then you might be in a really bad position if that transmission doesn't arrive right away. Uh, because you'll uh, lose a bunch of TIE Fighters, uh, which each of which is going to be a 24-point swing. And if you're chased off the board before that transmission arrives, you're not even going to score points for the satellites you control. The enemy will actually score points, even if you control satellites. Uh, they won't score as many as they would if they, if, uh, they control them, but still, uh, you'd, be in a pretty bad, you'd be in pretty bad shape. So keep all that in mind when you're building a list and when you're playing this mission. Good luck.